So I want to show you quickly how to um, how to change for the standard Escute uh, controller to the new controller that you get in the small box. Uh, you get your controller with two wires on it. Uh, there's no buttons on the front of this one compared to the one that's on the bike. And you also get your up and down controller button to replace these with another wire on it. And inside the box you also get a small rubber grommet which will replace the one in the middle and you get four little tiny um, posi one screws. Um, you probably won't need them if you're keeping the ones that's actually in this. So uh, I'm just going to show you how to replace this. I'm going to make it as simple as I possibly can. So first of all, I'm going to show you the tools we need to do the job. So tools we need to do the job. A posi one screwdriver with a small posi head on it. Um, a 5mm Allen wrench or Allen key, a 3mm Allen wrench, Allen key. Now I've got a pair of clips and I've got some cable ties just so that once I've removed these cables I can uh, tidy them back up afterwards. So you can see on the back of this controller, uh, like I see the new and the old controller, they're very very similar to look at. Uh, you can see there one's got buttons on and one hasn't, we're going to replace it with this one. Uh, on the bottom you've got five small screws and that's where your small screws that come in the box will go into. Now four of them are very very easy to get to, one of them is not so easy to get to but I'm going to show you how to do that as well, very very simple. And you also get inside the box your control button and that's very very simple to attach, you just literally wrap it around the handlebars and do the screw up and that's where you need your 3mm Allen key for. So we've got a blue socket on the bottom of this one, we've got a blue socket on the bottom of this one and a green socket. So Stage by stage, I'm going to show you how to do this. First thing you have to do is remove the four small screws. There's one, two, three, four. You can see them underneath the headstock or the stem. And uh, we're just going to take those out and remove those first. So remember, try not to drop them because you want to keep them if you can for uh, using later on. Sometimes a good idea to keep a white rag underneath the bike if you're taking out little tiny screws like these because they are very very small but if you keep a white rag underneath the bike if you do drop one you can see where they land so just excuse my head and I'll take these out So once your four screws have been removed from underneath the stem, you need to now slacken off the two uh, retaining screws that hold your stem, lock your stem in place, and then take out the little rubber grommet in the top. So you might just want to use a small little tiny screwdriver to pop in the hole. As you pop it in, you can just pull it out and uh, get the grommet out like so. So inside the top of that hole, you'll see there's another Allen key, which your six mil will fit inside. So you put your Allen key in and just basically slacken it off and loosen it all the way so you can remove the stem from the handlebars. Before you do any operations, before you do anything on the bike, I would recommend you take the battery out and remove it so it doesn't end up getting uh, damaging the electrics because we are going to be unplugging some cables in a moment. So now the handlebars are loose, just get hold of the cable coming out the bottom of the stem and pull it apart. It's quite a stiff pull, but you'll see there's a green wire that comes apart. Next thing we have to do is take the stem and just lift the stem off of the column and turn it upside down. Inside here you will see there's another small screw where you'll need your screwdriver and just remove it. Try not to drop it. I've got it. Okay, so once the five screws are out, you can then just slip that back on there to make it easy for you. And you just get hold of the top of it, pinch it, pull it out, and it lifts up and comes away. Now you see there's a wire attached, and inside here there's a slot with a hole in. Just lift that out, and it comes free, and you take it away. 
So you get your replacement one, and you can see the difference. They're both exactly the same shape and size and everything like that. And you can see the one we want put back in. The one with the two wires is going to go back in. So what you've got to do is you've got to feed one of the wires down through the hole, and then take the wire and lead it into the slot in the top, and then poke the other one in. So once that's in place, you then need to replace the screw in the bottom, which I tend to do first, then I know that it's inside and I've got to worry about it. So I take my screw, I put it on the end of my screwdriver, so it's upwards, lift up the stem and just slot it into the hole and do it back up. And then put the stem back on the top. So we know that screw's inside and we haven't got to worry about it. Next, we have to replace the four screws underneath. Very, very simple, reverse operation. And again, put the screw on the top of the screwdriver and just ease it up into the hole and do it up. Don't over tighten them because you'll damage them. We now have to make sure we do all of our screws back up. So we need to line our handlebars back up with the wheel. Do your top screw up first. So screw it in place. Make sure it screws all the way down tight. Lock it off nice and tight. Check your handlebars are in a straight line. Once that's pinched off, do up the two screws on the side of the column. Make sure you check both sides, tight, tight, and just for safety, make sure you've got that tight inside as well. Right, they're all done. Our next operation is to connect the cables. First of all, we have a green cable which is just one that I unplugged before. We're gonna take this green cable and plug it in. On the end of the cable, there is a small straight line. There's a small straight line, and you need to line that little small straight line up with a little tiny hole in the top of this. Once they are lined up, give them a good push, and they'll lock in together. Okay, and they won't come out. That's one in. The blue one then is going to be attached to your control switch and your control switch needs to go on the handlebars. So we'll put that on first with the three mil Allen key. So we take our three mil Allen key, undo the back, make sure the screw comes out and you'll see that the, it flaps open. Wrap it around your steering with the key on the, with the Allen key, the screw on the top, get it in position I position mine right up next to the handlebar grip and nip it up tight. If you want to check it for position, just make sure you can use your controls and your plus button, your power on buttons at the top. Once that's in place, you have to take your blue wires and the same again, you've got a small slot in the top of this one and a little rebate in the other one and you basically line the hole up with the little slot, give it a push and it goes in together. So you've now got two wires connected. The reason I wanted the cable ties is then I'm just gonna take a small cable tie, wrap it around this cable, leave it loose so it's tucked up in the way, nip off the end, and now that cable's nice and tidy up the top. I'm also going to take a second cable tie and just wrap it around these two cables. You don't need to, but I just want to keep them relatively tight together so they don't flap around the handlebars. Just make sure you put your small rubber grommet back in. And again, there's a slight little cutout on the top and that goes face up. Push it back in, it stops any water getting into the top of that screw. You can then pop your battery back in to make sure everything works. So once it's all on, everything's plugged back in, we just need to make sure that it powers up. 
So by powering it up now, we press the button on the top, and press and hold, and you can see it comes on straight away, saying zero, and it's on mile an hour. Yours will say kilometers an hour because I've already reset mine to miles an hour, um, and you do that through your app. Again, it's Bluetooth, so you just need to connect the Bluetooth app to this, and I've done a video that shows you how to do that, and then away it goes. If you want to power your power up, you can see the power's going up on the top there, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. So to turn your lights on, same as before, you press it once, your light comes on, press it again, and your light goes off. So to turn it off, to make sure to turn it off and the controller works properly, just press, hold, and it powers off.